Hi there, I'm Soi. Before we do the app critique, I would like to grab your attention and introduce Soi Design Picks, a designer jewelry website where you could find fabulous collection of fine jewelry for every occasion. No matter if you are looking to wear jewelry that would make you look professional at work or picking party ready jewelry, Soi Design Picks has everything you need. Click on the link down below to check out the store and follow us on Instagram to be the first to know about new limited edition designs. Let's get to the app critique. You can choose an app that you like to do this critique. Okay, so the app that I'm going to be going over is Etsy. Mm -hmm. um, just like a broad overview on what Etsy is, it is a online marketplace that is connecting um, shoppers with individual shops or sellers. Um, mm -hmm. You can kind of think of this as like a virtual craft fair or like a shopping mall. So when a person shops at Etsy, they're not shopping directly from like an Etsy warehouse. You're shopping from an individual shop. Um, mm -hmm. So they're kind of overall the Etsy, you know, brand is trying to support uh, small sellers versus like big box uh, store chains. So mm -hmm. I guess like the overall um, problem they are trying to solve is giving the shoppers the opportunity to find items um, virtually by independent sellers versus having to drive or take time out of their day to figure out where like local craft fairs are. Um, mm -hmm. Shoppers are able to shop locally, nationally, or even internationally, um, giving them like time efficiency and just ease of use of doing that. Okay, so I'm gonna open up the Etsy app now. Mm -hmm. So let's go to the main page. So when you open up the Etsy app, you're presented with the main navigation, which is the search for anything on Etsy. Etsy mm -hmm. really is kind of highlighting what its main function is, which is for you to shop. Um, they use the text copy search for anything on Etsy, which is kind of highlighting that there's a big variety of products. Um, mm -hmm. And then below that we have um, titles on what kind of items you can search for, photos highlighting the items and encouraging the user to scroll. Mm -hmm. And then at the bottom, we have the main um, navigation bar. So this is kind of including all the main relevant paths a user would take for like their primary um, destinations. Overall, I like, the use of like white space. The visual design is very simple. There's not a lot of color. Um, there's not a lot of competing graphics or anything to kind of distract a user. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it makes the shopping experience um, kind of streamlined. So if we scroll down on the main um, shop tab. Okay, before yeah. we get to the other part of the critique, can I ask a quick question? So when we're looking at the navigation bar at the bottom, what do you think about the navigation structure of this app? I like the navigation structure. I think there's mm -hmm. enough paths to take where it's giving me a variety of options to explore within the marketplace. So we have mm -hmm. the, main, um, the main one, which is shop, which is like the primary icon. And then we mm -hmm. have the explore feature, which I believe it's a new feature Etsy just came out with. Um, okay. Yeah, That's this cool. feature I haven't seen up until maybe a couple weeks ago. And I was looking at it a couple days ago and it really gives a feeling of something similar to TikTok. So mm -hmm. in this explore feature, um, you have videos from shops Hi, everyone. Um, that highlight products. Hi, everyone. Um, there's demonstrations and they show like the shop name. They show the item that is currently being marketed through the video mm -hmm. and the tags. There's an option to leave comments like, so it's really kind of engaging the shopper um, mm -hmm. 
to have like maybe a more intimate connection and look with the individual. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Patty Galoon Hansen, platform. graduate gemologist and um, owner and of Dorothy Galoon Jewelry. If we go to the right, we have look. favorites. And in this section, um, you have all the items you have previously liked and Etsy provides a way to organize that by something called collections. So for example, on mine, I have favorite items, must haves, and then like an inspiration um, category. So this kind of encourages users who maybe do a lot of shopping or they like a lot of things to come back later um, mm -hmm. and be able to pick out, you know, what item that was that they liked. Um, and they provide categories, you know, mm -hmm. and they have an option for a person to make the collection private or something that can be viewed by other people. Mm -hmm. So quick question um, here. Yeah. Um, no, so why okay. do you think they provide two options? One is make it public, one is keep it private. I think they give that option because they're as a shopper, there may be times where you like an item, but it might be an item that maybe you don't want everyone else to know that you like. For example, um, maybe it's mm -hmm. something that is when it maybe want to share with somebody that you liked mm -hmm. and so I think they give that option of um you know you can save it for later for yourself in a category that only you can see so there is you know that privacy there mm -hmm. um so if we go to the right on the navigation we have updates and in this tab we have all the updates from the shops that a user has previously liked. So in this section, you're given um, information on when a shop has either updated their store, um, like their store updates, or there's a new item for sale, or if the particular shop is doing a um, sale, all that information is going to be displayed under the updates tab. Mm -hmm. Okay, question here. So um, it seems like this updates, the information on this page is related to um, your collections. And we previously saw collections on the favorites page. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, so what's your thought around like keeping the two parts separated into two pages? Yeah, that's a good, uh, that's a good, uh, question. So um, what I've noticed for collections, um, the collection tab is for, or I'm sorry, the favorites tab is for all the items you favorited. So it might mm -hmm. not be a shop that you have favorited. So there's like two different categories when a person is using the Etsy marketplace. There might be an item they like, for example, you know, a shirt, but they might not like the shop itself so there's two different ways to i guess um save mm -hmm. that information so in the updates tab you're only seeing the the updates for the sh specific shops that you have favorited not necessarily mm -hmm. the items um so okay. i guess that's how they differentiate uh favorites from updates and yeah why they have collections mm -hmm. okay Okay, and um, then if we go over to... Okay, awesome. Yeah, thanks for doing the overview um, critique on the navigational structure of Etsy. Um, so yeah, let's go back to this homepage and I want to ask another question about what do you feel about the um, information hierarchy on this page? So we see that the first section is basically about similar to items you viewed. And as we scroll down a little bit, um, there's another section, our picks for you. So what's your thought around like how they organize the different pieces of information here? Like why you think they would like to organize information this way? Yeah, I believe they organize this, um, this information this way based on the shopping habits and the previous searching habits of their users. Mm -hmm. um, I figured maybe that's something they researched on, you know, when um, a user is presented, you know, the homepage, what are the things they mainly want to search for? Is it things related to what they previously searched for 
or is it just random things? So mm -hmm. I believe they structured this in a way to reduce friction on what a um, user would most likely um, be interested in, in seeing or searching for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, and then if we scroll down, they just give different categories on um, items they think, you know, the user might be interested in seeing based on previous views or searches. And then they give, you know, recommendations. Um, kind of midway, we do have like categories. Um, recommended, I'm assuming, is based on maybe the search history, but they have, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, images with titles on the relevant categories and an option to see more. Okay, cool. um, got yeah. a quick question here. So see that in this recommended category sections, Etsy is using like circular images um, for different categories. If we see the suggested searches down below, we see that um, Etsy is using like squared boxes um, for different like components. So what's your thought around like Etsy is using like different visuals to um, present different components and categories. Yeah, that's that's a good um, that's a good question. Um, I think they, they did it based on just the overall visual design and the feel of you know a circular icon. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of is giving like maybe a snapshot view. It's a little inviting. It's not rigid. And then they change that visual structure, um, and maybe for like variety or just to you know um, make it more relevant to suggested searches, which we're using, you know, like a rectangular box with a small image and a product mm -hmm. uh, title or tag. Um, so I I feel like they maybe did that to provide um, just a variety, so mm -hmm. it doesn't become maybe boring to see everything within a circle and text at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they have that for suggested searches and um, popular searches. And then um, another category, they're using cards with the product um, picture mm -hmm. with the heart. And something I noticed that's different um, about this structure is it's just the product photo with the ability to like, but there's mm -hmm. no um, information in terms of what it is exactly. Um, like there's right. no product title, there's no product uh, mm -hmm. shop name. And I feel like they maybe did that to encourage you to scroll or click to see more. Mm -hmm. um, and they do the same thing with the uh, recommended shops. They only give like a snapshot, but then in this section, they do highlight uh, the shop name, the ability to like the shop, how many listings they mm -hmm. have and um, so forth. Mm. Yep, awesome. Yeah, and then if we keep going, they just have more um, categories based on different, uh, different things um right. yes okay cool uh maybe we could pick a user flow and maybe you could just like walk through that user flow and critique along the way yeah okay yeah so i will go down to etsy's picks which is like a curated um item list based on what etsy feels is really great um, products or something, you know, kind of trending. So I'll click on this mug to see more. So if I wanted to purchase this mug, I have, you know, the option to see the main product page. Um, so the things that stand out that are highlighted for me as a shopper mm -hmm. um, is one, the image itself, it's taking up most of the real estate. Um, and up at the top right corner, we have a way to like this object. Um, we have a way to send. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to send it to someone and share it, and then we have a way to contact the shop. So when you're looking at this, if you have like a quick question about it, 
that you can't find that information in the product description, you're able to directly message the shop. Mm -hmm. Quick question. Um, yes. Why do you think they place these three icons on the top right of this image? Yeah, I think they place those three um, images or icons at the top right um, based on seller or buyer's habits um, mm -hmm. when they are shopping. So I'm assuming a buyer is most likely to either share something they found with someone, you know, in their personal mm -hmm. life. Um, mm -hmm. They have the option to ask questions about the specific item or to save this uh, for later. Mm -hmm. Yep, got it. Okay, and if we scroll down, we are presented with some relevant information about the object, uh, highlighting the shop's name, shipping information. Uh, we have the call to action to purchase the item. And then if we scroll down, we're gonna get more into details on what the item is, where it's from. And uh, then we're presented with the uh, shop rating reviews and other information. Mm -hmm. Could we do like a quick critique on the overall information hierarchy of this screen? So for example, why they put the price information on the top and also why they stack the item details information at the bottom. And yeah, maybe just do a quick critique on the overall information architecture of the screen would be super helpful. Okay, yeah, so um, when a shopper is presented with this part of the uh, main nav the main uh, layout of the item, mm -hmm. they're first presented with the price um, because people tend to quickly wanna know exactly what they're interested in is like what the price is and also highlighting that it's currently in stock if this was an item that only had a few items left, they would highlight that text with like three items left or, mm -hmm. you know, pretty much signaling to the user that uh, if you want this, you need to order it quickly, giving the user uh, a sense of urgency. Mm -hmm. And so they do provide a small title, um, I guess, tag from the shop on what exactly this item is. Mm -hmm. um, it's presented in a lower font versus the um, the price because price I think is more relevant to people than the product's uh, title. Mm -hmm. And then if we scroll down, we're giving chunks of information regarding um, shipping, um, how much the shipping is going to cost. They highlight that. Um, by bolding the price to give emphasis on the price. Um, they also emphasize the estimated arrival and also the shop's rating. So you know as a user, um, is this a shop that you know gives good customer service um, mm -hmm. and just kind of signaling a little bit more uh, information about what you're buying from. And then oh. they bring in the call to action buttons, which are very prominent and big to encourage uh, purchasing with the option of just adding it to your cart or buy with Apple Pay. Um, and something that I've always kind of wondered is why the call to action button buy with Apple Pay is um, prominent with the add mm -hmm. to cart. So that mm -hmm. is something that overall as a user, um, you know, I wanna know why they have that. Mm -hmm. And then below that, we have the terms of service, which is highlighted, but it's de-emphasized. Um, and then we get cool. into the item details. Yeah, um, so regarding the point, why the buy with Apple Pay is more prominent, in order to create a design that may align better with the user's mental model, uh, what would be some suggestions or recommendations you have for this one? Yeah, um, I guess my suggestions would be um, different ways to pay versus mm -hmm. just Apple Pay. I'm, you know, wondering why they chose that and not mm -hmm. other right. uh, methods. Mm -hmm. So that is something that I think could maybe be um, changed is giving the user an option to pick from maybe a variety of ways to purchase quickly. 
Right, right. And also for the font size, we could see that the buy with Apple Pay is bigger than the font size of Add to Cart. Um, so what's <laughs> your thought around that? Um, yeah, I feel like they highlighted it more so than the Add to Cart to reduce the friction time um, of purchasing something and add maybe a sense of urgency. You know, with the buy with Apple Pay, it's more immediate versus if you were to add to cart, you have the option of continuing to shop. There's also that, you know, part where you can maybe have buyer's remorse and it's in your cart and you may um, just, you know, remove it at a later time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So if we scroll down further, we're giving more relevant information such as item details, um, you know, where it's coming from, if it's a handmade item or if it's a supply item, they give a little uh, item description. Um, it looks like just maybe three lines and then you have the option to read more. I noticed some shops uh, can write really, really lengthy uh, product descriptions. Mm -hmm. So, um, they give the user the option to, you know, um, collapse it or to see more. Mm -hmm. And overall, I think they do a good job on the um, layout um, hierarchy, giving the relevant, most relevant information, um, kind of like in a specific order, the shipping, and then, you know, a lot of shoppers do want to know the reviews for the item or the shop uh, ratings or reviews. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Um, let me go to add to cart. So if I was a user that liked this item, I would add to cart. Mm -hmm. And then we get a micro interaction where it shows that the item has been placed in the cart with the icon. Right. Um, and I think, you know, they do that to definitely signal that this is something that you have, you know, an intention on purchasing and it's not to be confused with maybe um, liking an item. Okay, so next I'll go to cart. And in my cart, I'm able to see uh, the shop that I'm ordering from with the product uh, title and the price prominent. Um, there's also signaling um, that there's only nine left to give like a sense of urgency and to let me know as a shopper that if I want to purchase this, I need to probably do it quickly and that there are 19 other uh, people that have the same item in their cart. Mm -hmm. um, so below that, I'm given the option to remove the item or save it for later. Um, just in case maybe at this time I don't want to purchase it, but I do have a big interest in it and we'll save it for later. Okay, so um, then we are given um, the add a shop coupon code with an icon. Um, and this, you know, will help shoppers, you know, that have coupon codes and they can apply it at checkout to, you know, mm -hmm. lower their overall costs. Um, uh, quick question here. Yeah. Um, so what's your thought around Etsy is grouping the shop uh, coupon code and estimated delivery information in the same section? Yeah, I think they did that to quickly give the user the price total or the estimated total quickly. So there's not any, um, I guess, mental gymnastics on a person mentally, uh, you know, subtracting the total from the, the coupon code. Mm -hmm. So they give it in a clear, concise way on, um, you know, if you're going to add the coupon code, you're going to enter this information right here next to the total. So you can quickly see what the estimated total is before you get to the um, complete order um, section. Mm -hmm. And then below this section, there's another line, apply Etsy coupon code. Um, is that a button? that we could tap on or it's purely yes. informational? Okay. Yeah, so it looks like there are two distinctions with the coupon codes. We have shop coupon codes above and then apply Etsy coupon codes. Um, so I'm not sure why they differentiated that instead okay. of having 
just one part where you could enter coupon codes for either Etsy's platform itself or the individual shop. Mm -hmm. Kind of am wondering why there's two different differentiating um, coupon code uh, areas. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to change